we now move to race number 12, the Princess Grace Challenge Cup, the Open Women's Attention. Quadruple Skull in the Bark Station, Twickenham Rowing Club and Reading Rowing Club and in the Buck Station at Rowing Australia. And this is, I suppose this is the uniqueness of the regatta is that you've got top international crews racing club crews and that's a special thing about the opportunity you get to do here, to go up against the best in the world. And this quad just struggling there with their steering. I'm sure they're going to get a warning here, the Rowing Australia crew, as they're just starting to adjust to head back onto their station. Two of the athletes in this crew, Rowena Meredith and Harriet Hudson in the two and three seat, Olympic bronze medalist from Tokyo in the women's quadruple skull. The crew is stroked by Kate Rowan and Tara Rigney in the bow seat, who won bronze in Poznan at the World Cup in the women's single skull for Australia comes in to strengthen this boat ahead of the Lucerne World Cup. So would you say this is the top sculling boat for this season, is that? This is the top sculling boat for Australia at this point in time, as far as I'm aware. With, especially with Tara coming into the bow seat after her bronze medal in Poznan in the World Cup. But You've very clearly leading this race now. And I gather the man in charge now, Paul Thompson, his speciality is in this particular boat class with winning in various nations. <laughs> yeah, as we know, Paul Thompson has come home, come back to Australia to take up the reins as High Performance Director of Australian Rowing. The women's coaches though, John Keogh is the women's head coach, Tom Westgarth and Ellen Randall, the assistant coaches at the Women's Centre. This crew here, Tara Rigney in the bow seat from Sydney University Boat Club. Rowena Meredith in the two-seat from Sydney University Boat Club, Harriet Hudson in the three-seat from Sydney Rowing Club, and Kate Rowan in the stroke seat from Sydney University Boat Club. And They'll so have high hopes for the rest of the season in this boat. And just obviously they did the first world, the second World Cup. What's their kind of, um, where do they stay and that sort of thing? You know, they've obviously gone to Henley, but then they're going to go to Lucerne. Is there any other place they stay in between, or do they just go from one to the other? Do they just... Yeah, so we, as some people might be aware, have the European Training Centre in Gavarate on Lake Varese, which is basically an Australian home away from home. We even have Australian power sockets in the walls, so it really is a home away from home for our athletes who base themselves there in between their international regattas. But we move here to a picture of Twickenham Rowing Club and Reading Rowing Club. Hello, Worm Leighton in the bow seat, Katie Ann Birch in the two seats, Sophie Gray in three, and Lena Mills in the stroke seat. They're from the GB Start program. They started well yesterday, and once past the quarter mile, they were able to move smoothly away from Reading University to take out that round, but now facing the Australian women's quad, Rowing Australia, was always going to be a tough ask. Yeah, and they look know if they have just changed the Australian you know unit here and move people around they, they still look very in, in tune with one another it's a pretty impressive change it's only happened in the last week so this crew following Henley will move on to the Lucerne the third and final World Cup before heading back to Australia uh, so there's quite a big gap because of the European Championships this year to the World Championships, so we'll see the Aussies and the Kiwis head home for a couple of months and then come back for the World Championships, which are towards the end of September, so about a month later than normal. It's really late this year, isn't it? Yeah, it's a long season. And Twickenham athletes there, just, I suppose, in trying to enjoy this experience as much as possible, going up against the, the favoured Australian international crew. They're really well there as a unit. Athletes of the future if they're part of the World Class Start program. Yeah, such a fantastic program. Can you tell us a little bit about the World Class Start program? We reference it quite a lot in the commentary. Can you tell us what the program is and how it came about? Yeah, it's, it's kind of evolved over time. You know, looking for potential athletes with certain size, attributes that are accustomed to our sport of rowing. Um, so, you know, going through various centers schools and just finding athletes that you know might want to give rowing a go you can't say that because you have a certain size you can be brilliant but can we give these athletes the opportunity to find a sport um, and try and bring them into the rowing community and there are different centers around the uh, around the country that specialize in helping that development so we have many coaches scattered all over the country 
working hard to try and find those athletes of the future um, to hopefully make GB successful again. A bit of a steering direction required there. I was getting a bit concerned about that crew heading towards the booms. Tara Rigney just looking over her shoulder. They are steering well as they come down to the line. Solid row there for the Australian women's quad who will progress through to the next round. As we see the crew from Twickenham Rowing Club and Reading Rowing Club coming up to the finish past stewards. confirmation of the Princess Grace Rowing Australia taking the win over Twickenham Rowing Club and Reading Rowing Club.